be the fly. Fell in right there. Coronavirus 2020. And it's even got a Pharomex uh, GPU. Just to keep it interesting. Welcome to Camp Corona. Just getting some beans on the fire for dinner. <clears throat> we made a big, uh... Oh, it's right there on that rock, Ben. Yes. We made a big pot of beans last night for dinner. Or not for dinner, but just for the next day or two. Actually, we made them the night before and then cooked them overnight and we've been eating them, uh... Yesterday and today. My friend Ben here lives largely off of dumpster food for much of the year. He's an avid connoisseur of dumpster goods. He's talking about starting an Instagram for the things he cooks and makes with it. Either way, these beans came from a dumpster and so did the tomato sauce. And then the spices and everything were from a garden that was, uh, house I was kind of sleeping in my truck at and that will be dinner should be enough for two people right there I'll take a video of it here in a minute but I went through my food stores and I definitely have two weeks worth of food hopefully the grocery store here uh, it's about 25 miles away 20 miles away Hopefully the grocery store stays relatively stocked of some basic foods and we'll be completely fine out here for a month if things get pretty freaky in town. got our trucks we got fuel um, we're planning on posting up and just holding down this campsite we both got spinning rods and fly rods water fire ripping over here I'm working on some beans with tomato sauce and uh, onions Ben's boiling water for uh, a drinking and we are living the good life really uh, I almost feel guilty, like, making this <laughs> video right now. Because a lot of people in the city are probably freaking out pretty bad. But naturally, uh, my first inclination, which worked out well with the timing of our fishing trip, was go to a uh, kind of remote landscape in a desolate sort of place that you can uh, hang out by some water and buy a bunch of food and wait it all out. Yeah, I may be a little bit of a prepper. Prepper mentality. Got dinner going over here. Now I'm working on dessert. I've been talking about doing this for a few days. We started a sourdough a couple days ago. It's finally live. Making some dough. Some real apples I've had for like two weeks. One of them came off a tree while I was at work. Uh, and um, 
Ben, good old Benny here, dumpstered some uh, apple pie filling, which is really strange looking stuff. It has no flavor whatsoever, but it's like the consistency of artificial pie. So we're gonna um, do something with it. The only casualty out here so far is this broken spoon right here. Pie filling is made. That's what I kind of came up with for the first one. And we are going to see how this goes. Uh oh, I feel like it. I just broke it on the bottom. Ah, oil way too cold. All right, you fucked it up. Rule number one, check your oil. Okay, the oil is pretty much hot enough. And it's working. For now. Mission success. I stopped making them round, but they all turned out well. I like them better empanada shapes. That's pretty much, that's really like what they are more than pies at all. Apple empanadas. Effectively. All or more. Can you feel me eating it? Yeah, I do. Oh, it's so very disgusting. hot. Disgusting. Why is it fucking hot? Morning of day four at Camp Corona. Catching up on uh, maintenance of equipment, organizing my gear, sharpening things, etc., etc. A friend from town is coming out today. Things are still pretty, uh, pretty all right in the city right now. And so he's gonna come out and hang out for a couple days, he thinks, and then just go back because he's not working due to the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Told him to bring us more food. We're doing good for now. We're just gonna see uh, where this thing goes, but for now we're just recreating really and having fun. Uh, no stress. Gonna go do some fishing today. We still have yet to catch a trout. Gonna do uh, some shooting. Got the sight in my 308. I'm gonna shoot some other guns just for fun. What else are we gonna do? Oh yeah, it's time to look for sheds right now, which are you know antlers from uh, deer. They fall off in the spring, and it's that time of year. Look for animals too. We both have binoculars. We actually saw a uh, large herd of bighorn sheep the other night across the river, which was amazing, really cool, unique experience. You're lucky if you get to see them at all. Uh, and they pretty much came to us, and a lot of them. It was actually just right over here, uh, above the railroad track, and I started hearing rocks falling. And then at one point, you know, mentioned it to Ben, and he said, oh, I see an animal. And we both jumped up and started looking, and there were sheep, you know, just like on these rocks, on the sheer rock faces. Um, and they were just moving that way. You know, we started seeing them over here and the whole progression of them lasted over an hour and there were uh, a few dozen which is pretty cool this is like incredible no idea where they're going so yeah we're hoping to find them again sometime while we're out here see some mule deer something you know <laughs> the whole thing's unwrapping <laughs> The whole thing's like unraveling. What are you thinking, Ben? It's your move. <laughs> yeah, right. 
God, you guys built it up so much I forgot what my strategy was. Hold on, let Just me count. Just play your cards, kid. Picking up the uh, side canyon sphere for fun and views. See what we can find. I kind of had it in my mind. I wanted to find water, and we did. Probably won't be here in a month or two, but for now, there's enough water a guy could drink up here. I'm trying to get to it though. Too much time in camp lately and we're heading out to do some target shooting and make sure all the rifles are sighted in and we're gonna do some fishing and check out the camp spot at the very end of the road and maybe move later. So far it's been a very peaceful camping trip really. So my buddy Ben here is a uh, fellow truck vagabond and lives in his truck for a lot of the year. And he rolls with a kayak pretty much everywhere now. And a bike now too. Anyway, he, we got like probably two miles of pretty calm water. And so he's gonna put it in here and float down and meet me and Joe. I take a kayak everywhere so if I find water I can get in it. Safety third motherfuckers. <laughs> There you go. That's a good call. Design. Oh, here we go. It is a custom design. This is a custom, uh, let's show the viewers. Custom 2020 Bum Rumors sticker. My buddy Gabe makes these. These just came out. As you can see, it's very intricate. There's so much to look at. I Fantastic. Hot off the press is that? Hold the oar and then have Ben hold the oar too and you can kind of... Yeah, there you go. It's only a foot deep there, you wimp. Alright, here 
Alright, bon voyage, Benny. That was real nice. Write me a letter when you get to the Pacific. Now I'm driving the shuttle because my buddy, he's flying. He's moving like 20 miles an hour down the river. We have no idea where he went, but <laughs> he's got to be behind us, right? Like, there's no yeah, way. He could be in front. I mean, he was fucking flying. He could be in front of us. He's probably in front of us. Yeah. All right, we're hiking down the trail now. End of the road. Uh, ben missed the campground somehow, or the boat launch, and just kept floating down river. And uh, yeah, we're really hoping he didn't go too far because he has to hike that canoe or that kayak back out of there now. No idea why. We were coming down the hill in the car and I made a joke. What if we looked down there and Ben were going around the bend? And sure enough, we looked down there and Ben was going around the bend. Dumbass. <laughs> Fun fact about this trail and the road as well is that it's an old rail bed and you can actually see some of the original ties, wooden ties in the ground here. And then that big open gap we crossed right there would have been a, a uh, span a trussle over the little creek right there. And so this is a dead giveaway to where I am if you know this place, or really if you know railroads or Oregon at all. But we have an active rail line right over here. And uh, yeah, when it opened in 1912, it was the winner of a railroad war. And two competing companies were building rail lines on the opposite sides of the river, uh, competing to get to a city south of here and sabotage was involved they would shoot at each other and uh yeah destroy each other's work and everything uh, but now it's a wonderful trail through public land that you can hike for almost 20 miles pretty cool so here's some more cool evidence of the railroad about two or three years ago an enormous brush fire ripped through uh, Wasco, Sherman, Deschutes counties, 
and it got down here in the river, burnt up a bunch of wheat land. 220,000 acres. I can't remember the name of it right now. But either way, yeah, it got down here in the canyon and it burnt up the rail ties and uh, left these nice little garden beds all ready to go. Did you see a dove? Ah. This hike just turned into a dove hunt. We got invasive rock doves all up in the rocks around here. And we're walking the trail and they're just flying up from the river up into the rocks. I chased a couple up the hill and they made me and took off, but we got five more that we saw land somewhere up in this bigger rock face right up here. We're gonna go see if we can pop a few for dinner. We are legal and ethical in all of our hunting and fishing. Well, me, Joe, doesn't really hunt or fish. This is his first year buying hunting and fishing lessons. So I'm taking them out and getting them out into the great outdoors. All right, we finally found Ben. He's well over two miles past the boat launch where he was supposed to pull out the kayak. I don't think there's any chance you can see him. But he's all the way down at that furthest bend. So we're gonna be waiting for him for probably 15, 20 minutes. But... <laughs> Stop. Southbound train in the morning. One week at Camp Corona. We're packing up and moving. Our governor is supposed to uh, enact quote unquote much stricter uh, restrictions, regulations, or whatever for the virus thing and uh, stay at home stuff. So I'm going to go find internet service and get the word on that. Uh, we're getting packed up, like I said. Put my bike's bag up here on the truck. Benny's getting packed up slowly. Breakfast, boiling water. And then we're off. Thinking we'll be out here for another week, very possibly. If things look good and stable in town and like I'm gonna be able to work, I'll probably go to Bend and try to pick up some work there. So I really don't want to be in like a major metro area with a pandemic going on. Out. Morning time in town. I came in yesterday. I was going to get some more fuel. Some more gas in the truck, checked the phone, got a few groceries while I can. Go back to the truck and it just won't start. Fucking Fords. No idea why. Some weird electrical problem. Uh, it's not getting fuel. Both fuel pumps are not working. And I know they didn't both go out together. So it's got to be a weird electrical thing. Anyway, I have uh, a few hours until a part comes and we'll try to swap the uh, fuel selector switch and see if I get lucky and it works, but this could be, this could turn into a few days of me being in town. <laughs> it's a very small town, people here are going to know, and I don't think they'll be happy, but <clears throat> maybe that means somebody will help me. Back out here, Camp No Rona. We 
don't got no coronavirus. Uh, as you see, my truck is not here. That's because it's at an automotive shop in the Dells, the nearest city to here. Very unfortunate timing, but thankfully I couldn't figure it out. I tried for 24 hours to get it back up and running. Ended up being a weird electrical problem, like an exposed wire. They found it. I have enough money to pay for it, so I'm all good. Ben's going to drive me up there later, but right now we're waiting because my buddy uh, down in Bend sent me a 911 alert that came out from uh, Deschutes County because a 5,000 foot freight train is going to be coming through Redmond. And not only that, but it's going to stop in Redmond and switch cars for 60 minutes to 90 minutes, um, which is pretty unusual. Not oh, that length on this line is really unusual. And the fact that it's gonna stop in Redmond and do work is pretty weird. So I'm expecting some weird cargo, quite possibly, or uh, uh, like a military transport train, a long one, uh, or it's possible it will just be uh, related to the, the arrival of spring in the uh, wheat growing industry, because we do see a lot of uh, traffic, traffic increases during the spring when they're shipping grain around and seed and fertilizer and everything like that. So we're gonna wait for that and then we're gonna go get my truck and then we're gonna uh, quite possibly move camp from this valley to somewhere with more trees, perhaps, and more cover and privacy. We're unsure. Help. in the whip. Simple fix. This little fucker was part of the problem. Uh, heading back to the river to isolate and desocialize. This is really the most responsible thing I can be doing right now. Living in a truck, I have to hit grocery stores daily. And uh, obviously I don't have a shower back there. There's, it would be impossible to avoid being a vector for the disease if I were in the city. Uh, I'm gonna need to work at some point, but for now I'm, I have no idea what to do or where to go really. So hang out on some public land. Thank God for public land. God bless America. here you can't even tell that there's a river down here and a big one
All right, well, I'm down here on the bank. Whoa. Just had a big driftwood pile gathering some firewood for my little uh, my camping stove. I'll show you later, maybe. But we got uh, a few different edible green plants right here. Even in this country, look around you, you know. You're at 500 feet here in a climate that receives 10 to 15 inches of precipitation, probably. It's, uh, desert grassland, prairie, shrub step type ecology. And down here in the bottom of the canyon near the river, where it's shady, we have one Myers lettuce, a well known, delicious, juicy edible. It's just like the most tender, mild, basic green out here, practically. Along with this one, which is chickweed, the white flowers, very similar quality to the uh, minor lettuce. There's also this one, which is purple dead metal, I believe. Either way, it's a uh, mint family edible plant. Not great eating raw, but you can throw it into things or fry it or cook it in some way for extra nutrition. And then over here, up in the bushes, I'm trying not to trample my good patch of greens. Oops. But we've got um, two different, very similar plants. This one is water hemlock. And this is one of the most poisonous plants in North America. It will kill you. A very small amount will kill you. And uh, this is actually what was used to kill Socrates. Look that up. It sounded very unpleasant. Poor Socrates. Uh, and then this one here, which you'll notice is smaller. It has a little bit lacier uh, leaves with more rounded leaflets. Whereas this one I just showed you is more uh, angular, triangular, specifically. It's also a darker green, and it gets quite a bit larger. Another obvious uh, telltale sign is this one, when you damage it or rub it, it smells foul. Um, hard to describe. Acrid is really the word. But you, you can just tell you don't want to eat it. This one, on the other hand, has a pleasant, kind of woodsy, like, cedary, floral, um, licorice -y, a little bit, type of smell. And so this one is water hemlock, like I told you, and this one is wild chervil. Some of you are going to be familiar with the herb chervil. Uh, they're closely related. They're a little bit different, but they look very similar. And yeah, this one is quite edible. So far, I've found that drying it is definitely the preferred way to eat it because there is a little bit of bitterness to it when you just eat it raw. Um, cooking it also removes that bitterness. And, uh, yeah, of course you have blackberry down here too. And you can eat that. Specifically, the part you want to eat is the buds, uh, the leaf buds coming in. I'll find some and make a video of that. We got wild roses right here. This is gonna have some rose hips later in the year. For how barren the hills can look, this is a, can be a surprisingly productive place. It's actually raining right now, unusually, for where I am. This is normally a very dry place. 
but we're coming into uh, kind of like the one part of the year where it's really uh, green out here. And that's pretty much April and May. Uh, as you've probably read, this is the old section foreman's house for one of the uh, two railroads that ran down the river here. Here's a pretty good map of it. And uh, there were actually two railroads. I talk about this pretty often, or I have talked about it before, competing to come down uh, the river here. And this depot house is for the railroad that did not survive. Um, yeah. It's a picture of a train coming through for real. Anyway, it's a lot of really cool history out here. Ah, uh, you can't get into the building right now. I just wanted to show you all it. Maybe do a walk around. <clears throat> they do open it up, probably in the peak use time of the year, middle of the summer. Kind of see a glimpse. Hanging out, I'm gonna do some sewing. I'm Charging my portable razor. I have both water and power here. So today marks two weeks of uh, doing the whole desocializing, uh, stay at home thing for me. I've been out here the whole time. Uh, it's been great so far. Although there is a lot on my mind. Of course, with the whole pandemic going on, my future is pretty uncertain right now. Or what's going to happen to me in the next few months. But what I do know is I can't just stay here forever. Um, waiting for the thing to end because now that I've read the news for a while and kept up on it and we can kind of collectively see the direction it's heading it appears this will be here for a while and uh, yeah so I'm probably planning on getting out of here soon and at least moving areas to somewhere closer to a town um, closer to a town where I can find temp work, hopefully. There are some industries and some things that are still operating relatively normally and hiring. Uh, so I might go try to work for a while. Because really I had big plans for this spring. In my, I had intended to work you know, all the way through March and April until May or uh, some point in the summertime and then go look for a piece of land somewhere so I can uh, buy it and build myself a house. And I hope that happens. We'll see. Playing it by year. Or am I playing it by ear? I, I never have known. Please comment and let me know if I'm playing it by year or if I'm playing it by ear. I guess playing it by ear makes more sense because you can't really plan very well if you play things by ear. So, but I guess there's a deeper meaning to that too. Hmm. Intriguing.